And in today's video, I'm gonna show you the best NVIDIA control panel settings for maximum FPS and the least amount of input delay because I know this is so, so super important, guys, and so many people don't actually have the NVIDIA control panel set up properly, so therefore I'm doing this video just to help you guys out. And I know for a fact that there are tons of people who just go over this in like 20, 30 seconds and they don't explain every single step. And because I know that there are tons of people who don't even have a clue what each setting actually does, I'm going to explain everything slowly, step by step, and just for you to know that you're not messing up your PC. And if you guys want to support my work, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. This would help me out so, so much. And without any further ado, let's get straight into this topic. And after showing you the best NVIDIA control panel settings, I'm also going to give you some extra tips and show you some extra tweaks and settings to gain even more FPS and get less input delay. So stay tuned and now let's get straight into it. So, and now I'm going to show you first of all how you can actually open up your NVIDIA control panel settings. And it's super, super easy, guys. Literally, all you have to do is right click onto your desktop and just click here on NVIDIA control panel. Just simply wait a second. It's gonna take like, yeah, five seconds. And here we got it already. And as you can see, we got the adjust image settings with preview, manage 3D settings and configure surround physics. The only thing which we actually need to like pay attention to under the 3D settings is the adjust image settings with preview. And as you can see guys here, normally for you, it should be in use advanced 3D image settings or like let the 3D application decide either one of those here. But what we want to do is go over to use my preference advertising and we're going to put it on performance. It should be probably here on balance if you first of all click on it. And what this does more or less is, I don't know, let's 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 say you're like a boomer and you want to go for full quality while playing, put it on quality. Like you're, you're probably playing on a 4K display with 60 hertz, bro. But <laughs> nah, if you want to actually go for... <laughs> Jokes aside guys, if you actually want to go for the maximum performance, just simply drag this all the way to the left side here to performance and just simply hit apply real quick. So we save everything already. And now we can move on to the change resolution thing here on display. And what I just want you to make sure is uh, that you're running the maximum refresh rate. Trust me guys, there are so, so many people who buy a 144 Hertz monitor. They use it for several months, weeks, years, maybe even and they didn't even change from 60 to 144, 240, 360 hertz. I don't know what you're playing on. So please just check, please just do me the favor and always check that you're running the highest possible refresh rate. And if we now ensured ourselves that we are running the highest possible refresh rate, just simply click here on adjust desktop color settings. This is the next one guys. This is more or less personal preference, but personally me, I like having my game like a little bit more vibrant, you know, having the colors just popping out a little bit more. So therefore I'm just gonna recommend you here my brightness settings, which is 50. Don't put it on more or less because then your picture is gonna become like insanely bright and everything is gonna be like super washy. Contrast on just plus 52%, just add like a little, you know, like 2%, not, not too much. Just like play around with it a little bit. Gamma, we're gonna leave on plus one. And what actually makes the whole entire magic here is digital vibrance, guys. I have this on plus 75% because I really like my um, colors powerful, you know, like super like popping out and stuff like that. And you will notice a difference 100% and your game is just gonna look so much better. Trust me, just copy these settings here. Um, obviously it's personal preference, but those are like the best ones in my opinion. And now that we covered all the visual aspects of our monitor, we're gonna go over into manage 3D settings to cover everything in terms of performance. Because here we can actually put on the magic guys and set our GPU to give us more FPS and stuff like that. And I'm gonna be explaining everything step by step. So first of all guys, if we open our manage 3D settings, we can see now that we got global settings and program settings. You can of course do this for every single program, but I mean you obviously want global settings because this guide is not only for Fortnite, I know even though this is my main channel Fortnite, you can also utilize this in games as Valorant, GTA, Call of Duty, Battlefield, everything. So therefore we're obviously gonna apply it for global settings. And as you can see here guys, under the feature settings, we're just gonna begin here with image sharpening. I got my image sharpening off because it just puts some more workload onto our GPU and it's just gonna cost us important FPS. We're anyways playing on like 1080p, so therefore it won't really matter that much. And then next up, if we take a look here at everything which has like ambient occlusion, anti-strophic filtering, anti-aliasing, this is more or less everything for like sharpening the edges of like objects and stuff in game. So therefore, again, we're trying to go for the best competitive settings here in this guide guys and for the maximum amount of FPS. So therefore we're gonna turn it off. You can most of the time anyways like tweak this in game, but obviously if you're gonna disenable it or give it like a lower quality here in these 3D settings, um, it's also gonna look horrible in game. But again, we're trying to go for like competitive games and graphics don't really matter that much. We're just trying to go for like these high hertz, high FPS. So therefore you can disenable all of these here, everything which is 
pretty much here with anti-aliasing, anti-strophic filtering, any sort of filtering of your visuals, you can turn everything off because we don't need this. Again, just putting on a huge workload onto our PC, onto our GPU, and it's gonna cost us important FPS. And as we move now over to the next one, which would be background application max frame rate. This is kind of self-explanatory, but let's say as an example, you have YouTube running in the background because you like to listen to music or stuff like that. The refresh rate of Google Chrome is just gonna get turned down to save even more performance of your GPU, you know? Like everything is still running pretty much in the background, even though you have the program minimized, it's always running in the background. So therefore just put this on off because we don't need to run Google Chrome at like 240 Hertz, 240 FPS, you know what I'm saying guys? And then now here guys, for these next features, we have CUDA GPUs, DSR factors and DSR smoothness. They're all more or less disenabled here, as you can see for me, because I don't use any of these. This is all again for visuals, but CUDA GPUs actually is something you would need for like rendering over your GPU. So unless you're editing on a daily basis with Adobe Premiere Pro, you can theoretically turn it off. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it in the background because it's only gonna get utilized if there's really a program which can take advantage of this. Um, of this technology so therefore it doesn't really matter just keep it on here and then for the dsr factors and dsr smoothness as well just turn it off you don't need it again only visuals guys and yeah we're just trying to go for the max performance here then as we move over the low latency mode this is kind of interesting because there are tons of people out there who say that if they turn their low latency mode off they actually have less input delay there are some people who say if you just leave it on on it's going to give you the least amount of input delay and there's tons of people as well who say if you keep it on ultra that's the best way to go i personally have to say ultra work the best for me i guess it always depends like from system to system but more or less i would just recommend you to put it on ultra because it should work that way it's programmed to work that way and now this next feature max frame rate you can see that i got it turned to off and you're probably wondering yourself why does he have it on off let me explain guys um if you turn it on you're kind of like putting like a frame cap which we don't want we just want to have our fps uncapped so therefore just leave it on off. It sounds dumb in the first place because you're like reading max frame rate off. Like why would you limit your GPU? But it's actually the opposite way around. So therefore just leave it on off. And yeah, you're pretty much done here as well. Next up, monitor technology. We have G-Sync compatible because my monitor has G-Sync and FreeSync. It's XL2546, 240Hz Zoe monitor. But personally, I have to say I never utilize G-Sync because it more or less adds up more input delay, I would say. And I've also watched like many tech YouTubers and many like pro players and they all say that G-Sync doesn't really work like too well. Then again, guys, multi-frame sampling AA is again just a visual aspect. Turn it off because we wanna have no sort of technology like trying to correct our picture and stuff like that because again as mentioned we're trying to go for the best competitive settings and OpenGL rendering is only for applications. Again, we can utilize OpenGL um, that would be again like any sort of like video editing or stuff like that Just keep it on auto select unless you're running multiple GPUs Power management mode just obviously go for prefer maximum performance Some people also like to put it on optimal power But obviously I want to have my GPU always running at maximum performance to gain maximum FPS I think this is pretty self-explanatory So therefore I'm just gonna leave it on prefer maximum performance And refresh rate BenQ you can see here the highest available obviously guys um, if you're running like a 60 Hz plus monitor, always put it on highest available because you want to achieve the highest refresh rate obviously as well. And then for the rest of the settings guys, just simply make sure to copy everything here. Shader catch, self smoothness, just leave it all on low or off. This is all again just visual aspects of the game guys. Uh, texture filtering negative LOE base. I don't know 100% what it means. It's more or less again guys, just like any sort of like rendering technique. So we're just gonna leave it on on. Texture filtering quality, we're gonna put on high performance because we wanna gain the maximum amount of FPS. This is again pretty self-explanatory stuff here guys. And then yeah, just here for texture filtering, trillionaire optimization, we're gonna leave it on because it's just gonna like optimize our textures more or less so we get like more FPS again. This again does have something to do with like 3D rendering in games. So like textures which are closer to you are a little bit sharper than textures which are further away. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Threaded optimization, we're just gonna keep it on auto, triple buffering off, vertical sync off. If you're not running any sort of sync technology, you might try out um, V-Sync, but for everyone who's running like a free sync or G-Sync monitor, obviously turn it off because you have this sync technology, which is way better built in into your monitor and the last two options here guys that only really matter for VR headsets so yeah we're just gonna leave it on default and stock and then we're just gonna press apply here boys and this is it I'm just gonna go through it one more time here you can copy everything one by one sharpening off 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 
G-Sync compatible, prefer maximum performance, highest available, high performance. You can literally see it for yourself, guys. Just please make sure to copy all of these here one by one. I hope I explained everything like just roughly. As you can see, most of these settings are really just only important for single player games. The best way to summarize this whole tutorial would be turn everything off and just put everything on maximum performance. I think that's the best way to say it. And just as a quick reminder guys, if you change anything in your manage 3D settings, your image settings themselves are gonna go again to this like automatical feature. So you again just have to select use my preference, um, drag it all the way to the left side on performance and apply it again because I don't know like yeah, Nvidia likes to do this. If you change anything in your 3D settings, they're always gonna put this here again on the ones which are like the best ones, I don't know, the automatic ones, but we of course wanna go for performance, so therefore yeah, just select this here on the bottom again and you should be good to go. And yeah guys, finally I just wanted to mention that I have tons of guides on my channel already showing you how you can auto overclock your GPU without any knowledge. This will also boost your FPS and give you less input delay and many more optimization and tweak videos, so maybe you wanna check them out for yourself. And if you still have any more questions, feel free to ask them down in the comment section below. I try to answer as many as possible please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel this would help me out so so much and with that said have a great day have a great night whenever you're watching this and until next time stay awesome i'm out peace